And good evening, everybody, and welcome here to Knockout Qualifying for our 15th race of the season of the SRA Hershey's Cup Series. We are under the lights tonight at Darlington Raceway. The Lady in Black, the track too tough to tame. This track has more uh, nicknames to describe it than I don't know. Anyway, we're getting ready for the Knockout Qualifying session for the Mountain Dew Southern 500. We have 21 drivers vying for seven available spots in the starting lineup for this evening's points event. 21 drivers as opposed to the original 20 we normally have because just pulling off pit road is a driver that's going to be trying to make his Hershey's Cup Series debut. There he is. The number 82, Brant Ford of Jace Nelson. Driving the Ford Fusion out of the newly formed Dutchman Racing. And we'll see if he can qualify his way into his first race of the season. The other 20 drivers, all familiar faces that we've seen week after week in the knockout qualifying session. We'll bring up the ticker, but I don't think anybody's turned a lap yet. Joshua Michaels just now coming on track. Same for Michael Norman. My phone's going off, and okay, never mind. So, looks like our first lap laid down was by Joseph Srigley. Matt McIntyre also laying down a lap time. And Jace Nelson, so far, is top of the leaderboard. 29.729. There's Dallas McIntosh who I believe was the fastest in knockout qualifying last week at Charlotte. Try to make his second straight start. Didn't have the best of runs, though, at, uh, at Charlotte. He uh, finished off the lead lap, as I recall. And Matt McIntyre is to the top of the leaderboard. Let's find that eight car. Hmm, where is he at? He's somewhere. Whoa, Srigley just got wrecked. Oh, don't come down in front of traffic. Look out, look out, look out, look out. Oh, everybody's going to avoid him, fortunately. But that's going to damage the Pepsi Max Dunkin' Donut Chevrolet. And there's another car up in the wall. That is Chris Dowd, who nearly just got sideswiped by Joshua Michaels. Been a long time since they've wrecked in a knockout qualifying session. But that's why they call this the track too tough to tame. Now maybe I can find... Matt McIntyre. Somewhere. Anywhere. There he is. Right now, he's now second fastest on track. James Qualls just topped the leaderboard with a 28.979. As things stand at the moment, it would be Qualls, McIntyre, Cole, Matthews, Acovito, Norman, uh, and Cody Lamas, who just jumped up into the top five. Where's James Qualls at? Here you see damaged machines of Chris Dowd and Joseph Swigley coming to pit road. Not stirred and they really have time to be able to get those cars repaired. Is Brandon Gonzalez right there on the right side of your screen. He just jumped up into the top seven. Seth Cole just jumped up to second place. Acovito up to third. And whoa, Jason Nelson just jumped up to fourth place. Norman's now up into the top seven. Johnny Gardner just jumped up in the top seven. So now... Matt McIntyre is out. Acovito is in the danger zone with about 50 seconds remaining in this session. Nelson's en route to making his Hershey's Cup Series debut. Fifth fastest right now on the charts. Gardner sixth, Acovito seventh. If some drivers put down fast enough lap times, those three could be in trouble though. Looking at Brandon Gonzalez, 11th fastest on the charts. Was up in the top seven moments ago. This time, by does he beat his lap time? No, it was about three tenths slower than his fastest lap. Acovito, he's coming to pit road. Cittadino we're looking at, he's 14th fastest right now. Seth Cole has the second fastest lap time, so looks like he'll make the race. Acovito gonna be on pins and needles here. Five, four, three, two, one. Now drivers that have already taken across the line have to complete their lap times. Acovito is on the bubble. 
He's hoping nobody beats his lap time of a 29.0106. Qualls will be in. Cole will be in. As well as Lamas Norman. Looks like Nelson will make his debut. Gardner, I believe he is safe. And there's Acevedo coming back on track just in case. Uh-oh, someone just jumped in! Fitzwater! Fitzwater jumped up to fourth, Acevedo drops to eighth. And Acevedo is out, Fitzwater is in, Session should be coming to a close now. There he is, I was just trying to find him, James Qualls, the fastest in practice, 28.926. That is four one hundredths faster than second fastest on track, Seth Cole. And what a story for Jace Nelson. He'll be making his debut in Hershey's Cup Series competition. So there you go, your seven official drivers to transfer in. Qualls, Seth Cole, Cody Lamas, Zachary Fitzwater, Michael Norman, Jace Nelson, and Johnny Gardner. Drivers that miss out include Acevedo, McIntyre, Michaels, Gonzalez, Galligan, Matthews, Citadino, Geip, McIntosh, SP3, McMillan, Flickinger, Srigley and Dowd, who we, both, who we saw both have damage and have to come to pit road. Srigley got turned by either Acevedo or Matthews, I don't know which one, and Dowd got up and into the wall and got a famed Darlington stripe, never was able to recover and lay down a fast enough lap time to be competitive. So... Those are your seven that transfer in. Let's get ready for tonight's race here at Darlington. And good evening, everybody, and welcome here as we continue on our chase to the chase for the championship, race number 15 of the NCAA Hershey's Cup Series, coming to you live from under the lights at Darlington Raceway. We get ready for the run of the Mountain Dew Southern 500. 37 laps await us here tonight. And I'm quite certain that a number of these drivers are going to be leaving with the very famous Darlington Stripe on the right sides of their machines here tonight. Maybe the cleanest car in the field is going to win this race. We'll have to see if that is the case or not. Carson Scott will start on the pole position. That is his first pole of the season here for AS Racing. Alongside of him, Jessica Shelton, who finished second last week at Charlotte, moved herself out of 35th in the point standings. Starts on the outside of the front row. And let's go through the uh, remainder of your top 10 here. As Zach, uh, Zachary Fitzwater will start on the inside of row number two. Races his way in and knockout qualifying. Holden Gluba was one of four drivers who DNF last week at Charlotte. The roll off from fourth place. And you got James Qualls. He was the fastest to knock out qualifying to race his way in. And Danny Bouchard will line up in sixth place. Bouchard had a tough race last week at Charlotte. Dropped himself all the way down to sixth in the point standings now. Joshua Circuli, two-time winner this season. He had a decent run last week at Charlotte. Ended up finishing top ten. He's fifth in the points coming into tonight's race. Alongside him is Rocco Twyman, who also, with a good run last week, finished top five, moved himself back up into the top ten in points. Currently sits ninth in the standings. Blaine Keyes also finished top five last week and moved him up in the point standings as well. As a matter of fact, I believe he's top 20 in points now. He will line up on the inside of row number five alongside of the furniture row Chevrolet of Ryan Acosta, who at the current moment, and we'll elaborate this on this a little bit uh, later, is in the first wild card position right now, the highest running in points outside of the top 10 with a victory. Let's take a look at the rest of your lineup here. There's Benjamin Miles in the 25. He's actually just outside the top 10 in points, starting pretty far up. There's the new Audi RS, I believe it's the RS5 of Anthony McCrory, making a debut in a new uh, Audi here tonight. As we cycle on back through the remainder of the field, you saw there the sixth car of last week's winner, Richardson, and there is Noah Cars, who uh, finished, I believe it was dead last last week, at Charlotte, and as a result, he's actually fallen out of wildcard spot number two at the current moment, so uh, we'll see what he does here tonight, as we're going to get the command to fire up the engines for tonight's race here at Darlington. There's the command to fire him up. Some very energetic Grand Marshals here tonight. Your point standings coming into this race are as follows. Jake Baskinger is now the new points leader. Took the points lead away from Jeremy Jones. 
Last week at Charlotte, Jones is still second in points, though, only six points out. Kean Eddington is now third in the standings, Tim Walsh fourth, Joshua Circuli moved up to fifth. Daniel Bouchard dropped the most of the drivers up in the top ten in points last week. He's now sixth in the standings. Mason Powers moved back into the top ten. He's seventh. James Richardson's win at Charlotte last week moved him up to eighth in the points. Rocco Twyman's back into the top ten in points in ninth. And Joshua Lee still hanging around in the top ten in points. He is tenth in the standings. The two wildcard spots right now would be held by Ryan Acosta. His win at Daytona, 13th in points. We get him wildcard spot number one. JT Bryant, 16th in the standings with his win at Las Vegas, would have wildcard spot number two. So here we go, getting ready to turn them loose. I'm expecting a wreck fest, but then again, you never know. Carson Scott, Jessica Shelton, both looking for their first wins of the season. They'll get us underway green flag racing in the Mountain Dew Southern 500 at Darlington. Whoa, aggressive move there by Ryan Acosta to move from the outside to the inside lane, which is undoubtedly going to be the preferred line here tonight. There's no doubt about that. The outside line gives you a much greater percentage chance of getting a Darlington stripe hitting the outside wall. And Carson Scott on the inside line gets a good run into the corner, and he'll clear for the top position already. They're backing up back there. It's a Holden Gluba in the wall, and Daniel Bouchard almost ran him over. But they managed to get through it. One thing I also should point out, these drivers cannot make it. This entire 37 lap event on one tank of fuel. If this thing does, and I stress does, go green flag to the end, we will have a round of green flag pit stops before the checkered flag waves. Here's the battle for second. Fitzwater using the outside line will keep the spot. Qualls there in third. Wyman in fourth, and you got Jessica Shelton right there in fifth place. And now Twyman looks to the inside on James Qualls. Coming out of turn number two. Qualls has to bail out of the throttle there. Oh, wow, almost up and into the fence. He might have made a little slight contact with it. I don't know. Looks like there's a good exit out of four for the drivers on the high side. It's just the entrance into three that kills them. That's how Rocco Twyman got around James Qualls, and now Daniel Bouchard taking a peek for the fourth position. Meanwhile, the battle for the lead may be heating up. Fitzwater beginning to reel in the great clip Chevrolet of Carson Scott. Rocco Twyman there in third, clear of traffic. He's now beginning to try and reel in the top two. As that time by, Fitzwater cut down the lead by about a tenth between himself and Carson Scott. I just want to look at the rear of the field, make sure everybody is okay. It looks like everybody up to this point is good, but look at who's way back now and dead last. Last week's winner, James Richardson. No cars back here. There's Trent Dunham. He's 15th in points, I believe. Jace Nilsson making his debut here tonight, back in 35th. And Joshua Lee, oh, car in the wall, that's Austin LaPlante. And you can see he's got a Darlington stripe now. That's not good for Austin because LaPlante actually dropped to 35th in points after last week's race at Charlotte. Now he has about a 60 point advantage between himself and Chris Dowd is 36th in points and Dowd didn't even make the race here tonight. So he's got a little bit of leverage does LaPlante but still it's been a pretty struggling season for him so far. Meanwhile, back up front, we are still green. Believe it or not, we are still green. I'm shocked that we are at a track like Darlington. Darlington, usually it takes us a number of wrecks to get to a long green flag run, but we're starting out this race with a long green flag run as James Qualls thought about taking second place from Fitzwater, kind of messed up his entry into three on the inside line, which is surprising. The inside line usually happens. Oh, caution! right when they hit the stripe. I think they crossed the line before the caution flag came out, so I believe they're still gonna race around. Well, maybe not. They might have been just before it when the caution came out. They are slowing. That looks like Cody Lamas, the reason for the yellow. There is smoke on the front straightaway. So are these drivers going to pit now? If they do, they can make it the rest of the way. And it looks like they're gonna take the opportunity. 
Carson Scott making no doubts about it. Pulls down way to the apron to indicate he's coming to pit road. Now, is anyone risking it? Blaine Keys is staying out. Ooh, that could be risky for the 48 car. Some other drivers, Johnny Gardner staying out. I couldn't tell who that other car was. It's like Kean Eddington is staying out, Pichu London staying out. So I think there are four cars staying out, the 48, 33, 21, and 12. Interesting strategy. They must be banking that we're going to have another caution flag or something. Carson Scott pulls into his first pit stall. So how the first pit stall played a big factor into the outcome of our winner at Charlotte last week. And wow. <laughs> Carson Scott just getting out ahead of Zachary Fitzwater. So the leader, when we go back green, looks like also Tristan Folks and John Arndt stayed out. So six drivers staying out under this caution. And the leader, when we go back green, will be Blaine Keys in the 48. But let's see what happened to Cody Lamas to put us under the caution for the first time here tonight at Darlington. Well, apparently we had two incidents take place, one right behind the other. Now here's what happened to Cody Lamas. He just goes wide into the corner. Hits where the safer barrier kind of juts out there on the outside wall. And that's what caused him to spin around. Nobody else hit him. However, we did have another spin on this straightaway. And I think it might have been either McIntyre or Norman. Because this is awfully tight coming off turn four. Maybe it happens further up. But I, I would bet my money that it's going to take place right here. And I think... Yep, there it is. Norman gets hooked by Ryan Madden. Sent down towards the inside wall. Ooh, that's some pretty hard impact there for Michael. Roof flaps deploy. Mashes the throttle, and he's, wow, fishtailing it as he gets it straight and continues on. But, yep, Michael Norman just kind of got dumped there by Ryan Madden. That was back around the... Uh, Roughly 25th, 26th position. Norman then crossed the line, sliding in the 33rd spot, but he has got damage. So that is uh, what put us under the caution. I'm pretty certain the caution came out for Cody Lamas already. And then we had that follow-up wreck out of turn four. So let's head back now for the restart and see just exactly what kind of scenario Blaine Keys and those other six drivers are banking on. I find this strategy very, very interesting because I cannot see in any way a positive outcome with staying out. Blaine Keys, Keen Eddington, Pichu London, Johnny Gardner, Tristan Folks, and John Arndt. That is your top six that stayed out. Then the rest of your top ten for the restart will be Carson Scott, Zachary Fitzwater, Daniel Bouchard, and Rocco Twyman. Now, the reason I say I can't see a positive outcome for this strategy is because, okay, if we do have a caution come out, then we know that Carson Scott on back can make it on fuel now. They won't have to pit again. So the 48 and the other drivers behind him will be giving up track position anyway to come to pit road. If this thing goes green flag to the end, we know for certain Blaine Keys, Eddington, London, Gardner, Folks, and Arndt cannot make it the entire way on fuel. There's no way they could have even clutched enough here under these pacing laps. So they're going to end up finishing off the lead lap while Carson Scott on back will be able to make it the rest of the way if we go green. So I don't really see a benefit to staying out for these drivers. The only one that maybe could have reaped some kind of benefit was the 48 of Blaine Keys with getting the bonus point for leading a lap. That's the only thing I can see being a possible thing that, that could be in any way a benefit to these six drivers who decide to stay out. And Kean Eddington might be taking advantage of maybe getting a bonus point for leading a lap too as he moves to the lead now. And now he'll get a bonus point for leading a lap. Now the driver, that's the highest up of the drivers that pitted under that caution is running right there. Zachary Fitzwater got around Carson Scott who's actually beginning to free fall a little bit. Daniel Bouchard there in the four also pitted. So it could come down between these drivers and whoa, wow, Fitzwater on the apron. Oh, what a save. And Ryan Acosta's up into the wall. And oh man, they're getting racy now. Oh my 
Goodness gracious, that was heart stopping. Kean Eddington leads. Johnny Gardner just moved by for second pit place past Blaine Keys. Tristan Folks finished runner up last week at Charlotte. I think I said Jessica Shelton finished runner up, but actually I think she finished in third. I'm pretty sure Tristan Folks finished second place at Charlotte. And then Pichu London right there in the fifth position. And then there's the first of the drivers to pit. Daniel Bouchard right now running in sixth place. John Arndt seventh. Rocco Twyman in eighth. Ninth place James Qualls. And now Joshua Circuli is up to the tenth position. So looking for back-to-back -to -back top tens is that 27 car. And look who's right there in the twelfth position. I mentioned Benjamin Miles. If I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong. I'd have to look at the point stands again. But I think Benjamin Miles comes into this race 11th in the point stands. It's either 11th or 12th. He has been really consistent in the last couple of weeks. And Benjamin Miles right now trying to make his way into the top 10 in point standings. Right now, the way things stand, it looks like he could very well be inside the top 10 in points when we leave Darlington if he continues to run where he is. And keep in mind, he pitted with these other drivers. These other drivers have to remember that there are about five or six other machines up ahead of them that are going to have to pit before this race is over. So that's about five or six more extra spots for them. Oh, and the caution's out again. Second caution of the evening. Now, is this what Kean Eddington and these other guys were looking for? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I would be shocked if sixth place Daniel Bouchard, eighth place Rocco Twyman, ninth place James Qualls, and tenth place Joshua Circuli come to pit road. If we don't see the six drivers that stayed out coming to pit road, that's going to shock me even more. Pits are open, and they are not diving to pit road. I don't understand this. I don't see how they could possibly have clutched enough fuel to make it to the end. But maybe they know something I don't know. Kean Eddington leads. And it looks like Dylan Young, Cooper Siron, possibly Austin LaPlante. And there was another car on pit road, and I could not tell who it was. I tried to see, and I couldn't tell. It might have been Emmanuel Hartnett, but I don't know. I can't confirm that. They were on pit road, and we are under caution for the second time here tonight, just around the halfway point. So let's take a look and see what put us under yellow once again here tonight at Darlington. Well, shades of what happened with our first caution with Cody Lamas. Daniel Voyles goes too wide into the corner. And right there, hits where that safer barrier juts out. There was already a wreck further up ahead, actually. That So Voyles wasn't the reason for the caution. Oh, oh my goodness, that is carnage. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think based on who's where. Okay, wow. Oh my goodness. I think it was started with Cooper Siron. Nope, it didn't. It started with the 95 of our points leader, Jake Baskinger. Okay, let's see what happens here. Same deal. He goes too wide in the corner, nails that safer barrier. Around he goes, and then here's where the carnage begins. Joshua Lee just avoids, oh, Jace Nelson in his debut gets involved right there. There comes Cooper Siron, there's Mason Powers, Seth Cole, Dylan Young, and the track is just blockaded up. There's Jeremy Jones, second in points, so the top two in points involved right there. Here comes Dylan Pote, full speed into his teammate. Last week's winner, James Richardson, LaPlante, Dunham, Noah Cars, Voiles. There's Cody Lamas hitting the upside down Austin LaPlante machine. Wow, absolute utter carnage. That's the top two in points. That's at least 13, 14 cars involved. Dylan Pote was running well in points. Richardson, after his win, moved up to eighth in points. Trent Dunham was running well in points. Noah Cars, we were talking about his difficulties. Oh, and there was another wreck. Another wreck here. I think Jace Nelson got involved in something else with Levi McIntyre. Yeah, this was coming out of four. Nelson already had gotten damage after making contact with Baskinger. Oh, and then Levi McIntyre slides into Holden Gluba and then goes up and collects the 82. So Nelson, welcome to the Hershey's Cup Series, making his debut here tonight. Boy, 
hard impact there. Mason Wood is smoking. That is one, two, three, four, at least four, maybe five drivers in the top ten in points getting involved in this wreck. Wow. They're out of top of the pace car. We're getting ready to go back. Green flag racing here. Lap 21 of 37 is when the green flag will come back out. Kean Eddington out in front. Keep in mind, stayed out. Did not come to pit road here under this caution. So, boy, very risky move on his part, but he's the leader. Blaine Keyes is second. Johnny Gardner third. Tristan Folks fourth. Pete U. London right now runs in fifth. Danny Bouchard sixth. Seventh, John Arndt. Eighth place is Rocco Twyman. James Qualls up to ninth, and... Joshua Circular completes top 10. Dylan Young lines up on the inside line one lap down. He's 34th. We've got 33 drivers in the lead lap drivers out of the race after the wreckage we just saw take place. Are Dylan Poteet, Seth Cole, Mason Powers, points leader Jake Baskinger, Cooper Siron, James Richardson, our winner from, from last week, as well as Austin LaPlante and Noah Cars. Green flag back out here at Darlington. Gives us about uh, 17 laps to go. And Dylan Young is holding up his teammate, Johnny Gardner. Whoa, James Qualls went down on the apron, almost slid up into John Arndt. As the top two have checked out. Ken Eddington and Blaine Keys is Gardner. Oh, look out, Dylan Young up and into the wall. Yeah, beat you. London just got the wall and nearly just wrecked into Circuli. That really messed up the 21. Oh, they're, they're really... Oh, my goodness. Oh, London up and just slammed the wall there in turns one and two. And he got Rocco Twyman right all over his back bumper. JT Bryant nearly got turned by Leon Alvarez. Somehow we're still green. Don't ask me how. Good Lord, this is chaos back here. Jessica Schelt, I think, just scraped the wall. I think Joshua Lee and Mason Wood may also have just gained a Darlington stripe. And look at the racing back here. They're three wide. Ryan Madden, Cody Lamas, Holden Gluba, William Brock in this group, along with Michael Norman, Levi McIntyre, Trent Dunham. Good gracious. Now Ryan Acosta works his way around the lap machine of... Dylan Young, Shelton does the same. JT Bryant now works by his teammate. Now things seem to be settling out at least for the moment. Blaine Keyes, he did have uh, Key and Eddington right within striking distance. He's now lost some ground between himself and the white tail Chevrolet. Eddington with, I'd say, roughly about five, six car lengths in hand between himself and Blaine Keyes. Johnny Gardner still in third, even though it took him a little time to get around the lap machine of his teammate Dylan Young Tristan Folks right there in fourth Daniel Bouchard in fifth we got a battle going on for sixth and that battle was very quickly ended James Qualls moving by seventh place now just changed hands Circuli moves on past as John Art will fall from sixth to eighth in the matter of a couple of corners Zachary Fitzwater running ninth and there's Benjamin Miles in the tenth position So still that big question, I think Ian Eddington's going to have to pit. Him and Blaine Keyes both have not been to pit road. Now, I'm trying to get some word on whether or not they could have been clutching under our two cautions. But even with that being said, I don't see how they could have clutched enough to save enough fuel to make it to the end. If they do, however... It'll be an, an absolutely amazing thing. I'm trying to remember, there was a race earlier on this season. And I'm trying to remember who it was. Somebody ended up clutching with enough fuel to get to the end. I believe everybody else ran out of fuel and they made it. And I'm trying to remember who it was that was able to make it on fuel. And it's not coming to me right at the moment. And I remember, if I'm not mistaken, my very words are were uh, that was the most tremendous display 
of fuel conservation I've ever seen. Well, if Key and Eddington, Blaine Keys, these drivers can do that here tonight, that'll rank right up there as well with one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen because coming into tonight's race, these drivers knew, everybody knew, they can't make it this entire way on fuel going green to green from beginning to end. So, maybe a little bit of risk reward here with trying to clutch with these timely caution flags. I don't know. We got a battle going for second now. Johnny Gardner has been able to reel in Blaine Keys for the runner-up spot. And you got Daniel Bouchard and James Qualls has worked past Tristan Folks to move into the top five. Qualls is on a mission. I think he restarted back in the seventh or in the uh, ninth position. He's already up to fifth. All this going on behind Kean Eddington, though. Who keep in mind, Kean Eddington is third in the point standings right now, with Jake Baskager out of the race and Jeremy Jones. Where is he running? Running in thirtieth place. Eddington, as the way it stands right now, could take the points lead over heading into next week. It's not impossible. Thing he's got to worry about, though, is running out of fuel before he gets to the checkered flag. If he loses all those spots, then there goes his opportunity to take the points lead over. About to have a four-way battle for the second position now as Danny Bouchard and James Qualls have been able to reel in second and third place Blaine Keys and Johnny Gardner. This were the battle for the lead. It'd be pretty good, but the leader is about seven-tenths up ahead of him. Make it eight tenths now at the line. And Johnny Gardner will drop from third all the way back to fifth. Bouchard and Qualls. This is not a draft reliant racetrack, but these two, it's almost like they're in a two car tandem. Here comes Bouchard now going to try and go for second place off of Blaine Keys. It's been more a, a situation rather than a two car tandem of that Daniel Bouchard's been making the moves. James Qualls have been filling in the hole and moving on by for position again. There they go again. Now they'll go for second and third underneath Blaine Keys. And now Qualls says, okay, thank you, Daniel, for getting me up here to the front. Now I'm going to try and run down the leader. Whoa, Bouchard gets loose in the corner. He slapped the wall. Hung on to her, though. My goodness. What a save by Daniel Bouchard. And now James Qualls begins the undaunting task of trying to run down Kean Eddington. But if you notice, our laps are ticking away. Four to go and they last hit the stripe, but there is a slower machine up ahead. That is Jace Nelson, the debuting Jace Nelson. Oh, and Kean Eddington's going to encounter him here in the turn. Can James Qualls use this opportunity to close up for the lead? Nelson going to hold off Keen Eddington at least for now. Now here comes Eddington to the bottom for the top position. Oh, goes down the apron. Losing momentum. Here comes James Qualls right up to his back bumper. James Qualls is right there with about two and a half laps remaining. They are nose to tail coming out of turn two and down the back straightaway. Blaine Keys. Now he clears Nelson. Gardner trying to clear Nelson as they're trying to reel in these top two who are in a locked battle for the win. Kean Eddington, it's a big question mark about fuel for him. James Qualls, we know he can make it the rest of the way on fuel. He pitted back under our first caution. One and a half laps to go as they exit turn number two. White flag will be displayed next time by about a car length between the white tail Chevrolet and the four travel Chevrolet. Who wants it more? Here's Qualls closing up the gap. He let out of the throttle just a little bit there to be able to get a better exit out of four. The white flag is displayed for Key and Eddington. Can he hold off Qualls for one more lap? It's mano a mano. Eddington versus Qualls. Nobody else will play a factor. Third on back will not play a factor. Slower machines at the tail end of the lead lap will not play a factor. Down the back straightaway. Will Qualls make a move? This is his opportunity. Will he dive to the inside line? No, not yet. He's still within striking distance, though. Runs the same line as Kean Eddington and loses a little bit of ground coming out of four as Kean Eddington hangs on, has enough fuel, and wins the Mountain Dew Southern 500 here tonight at Darlington Raceway.
and he did it on one tank of fuel. See, commentators don't know everything. I said when we started, these drivers could not make it. This entire race on one tank of fuel, Kean Eddington just proved me wrong. He may have just taken the points lead, and he may have just locked himself up a spot, perhaps, in this season's chase for the championship. Depending on how the rest of his regular season goes, but that was a huge statement made right there by the 33 team. What a race there at the end. The slower machine of Jace Nelson, who at the time was the last car on the lead lap, held up Kean Eddington, messed up his entry into turn number one, and James Qualls took advantage. He nearly took the lead and the victory away from Kean Eddington right there, but Eddington hangs on and takes the checkered flag. James Qualls, obviously his best finish of the season in second place. Third place for Blaine Keyes. He managed to hang on on fuel as well and get a good finish. And then he got Daniel Bouchard. He was able to hang on after slapping the wall out of four. He'll get fourth place. And Joshua Circuli, he restarted that last restart in 10th place, worked his way up to the fifth position. So a pretty good run for the RCR drivers of first and a fifth place finish. Johnny Gardner finishes the night out in sixth. Zachary Fitzwater in seventh. Tristan Folks, after his runner-up finish last week at Charlotte, he'll get eighth here tonight. Ninth place for Rocco Twyman. And Benjamin Miles may have moved himself up into the top ten in the point standings with a tenth place run here this evening. Let's see what the rest of our drivers that came in top ten in points where they finished out this evening's race. Uh, there you see JT Bryant who was holding on to wildcard spot number two coming into tonight's race. He finished 13th. Ryan Acosta, who held wildcard spot number one, finished 14th. Joshua Lee, 10th in points, finished out in 15th place. Tim Walsh, 4th in the stand. He's got 18th here tonight. As we look further down, got to go quite a ways down before we get to uh, Jeremy Jones, 29th tonight, came in 2nd in the point standings. And then you look down here and Mason Powers came in 7th in points, 37th tonight. Points leader coming tonight, Jake Baskinger, DNF'd in 38th. James Richardson, last week's winner, was up to 8th in the point standings. He finishes 40th in this evening's event. And then Noah Cars, former winner from Martinsville. I believe this is the second straight week he has finished in dead last. And Austin LaPlante, 35th in the standings, finishes 41st tonight. So not good for either of those drivers at all. So the drivers that are definitely going to benefit in the point stands will be Kean Eddington, Joshua Circuli, Daniel Bouchard, and Rocco Twyman. We'll have to see where they are situated in points after the events that took place here tonight at Darlington. So thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed this evening's race, be sure to give this video a like. Subscribe to become part of the crew today. We will now show you your full finisher results, even though we already showed them, but we'll show them so that way you can see them more legibly with the names and the finishing positions, as well as your point stands heading to next week, as next week we head back to the West Coast for racing in the desert. Phoenix Raceway will be our next stop, and it will be the continuation of our chase to the chase for the championship. Once again, congratulations to Kean Eddington, the 33 team, on their first win of the season here tonight in the Mountain Dew Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway, as you've been watching a production of the SRA, Offline Racing at its best.